to church. What a wonderful place to be any morning, especially on Sunday morning, the Lord's holy day. We're going to start things off with a song here to get things uh, in the mood here. And you can sing along. You can say hi to your neighbor. Do whatever you need to do to get into the mindset to worship our living Savior, Jesus Christ, the one that loves you more than anything else in the world. We have uh, some kiddos from Children's Church that are going to sing a special this morning, but one of them aren't here just yet. So, JC, we're going to skip Waymaker for right now and come back to that, and we're going to start with uh, Glory Land. Oh, never mind. There he is. Come on, Elijah. There he is. He made it. It's going to be a real treat for y'all. This is a real blessing. It's, I tell you what, it's hard to get up here to sing and sing as an adult. Trust me. When you got children that want to profess their faith and sing to the Lord, y'all, it doesn't get any more pure. It doesn't get any more braver than this right here. These two young men are definitely brave, and they're going to sing y'all a beautiful song. Good job, guys. Good job. Proud of you. That's beautiful. We're going to have to have y'all back in and do some more. That's Good job, guys. Good job. That was awesome. Good job. High five. There you go. All right. It's awesome, isn't it? 
Well, welcome to church, huh? Man. Oh, we feel like we're at church now. <laughs> Good to see you guys this morning. I don't know if you just arrived to go to Sunday school or not, but uh, we're glad you made it on that time change. Uh, but, uh, man, it is a beautiful day outside. We've got spring break going on. It's just a lot of great things happening, and we're so glad that you are here to worship with us this morning. Um, one announcement I know of off the top of my head is uh, next Wednesday night, the 22nd, uh, when you, if you come to youth on, on Wednesday nights, um, the 22nd, 6th through 12th grade, we're going to be traveling over to Mineola to the Nature Preserve with four or five different churches over there. We're going to have a deal that night. Um, so we won't be meeting. We'll meet here at 6 and leave. So if you usually come on Wednesday nights, come here at 6 and we'll send a reminder out and we'll travel together over to the Nature Preserve. The little ones that night, we're just not going to have anything uh, that night for first through fifth grade. Uh, so we're all going over there. So won't be anybody here to watch your kiddos there. So, uh, But it'll be a lot of fun. And we got some other things coming up on Wednesday night. So get involved in those as well. Uh, let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so thankful, God, for this beautiful day. Thank you, God, for uh, giving us the opportunity to lift our voices to you, Lord, and, and worship and to sing praises to you. And God, I just pray that we can all be like these young men up here who are who are pouring their hearts out for you, God. Just allow us to, to be used by you, Lord, not, not caring what anybody else thinks, but God, knowing that we are lifting our voices to you in worship. And God, may we come with, with pure hearts and, and, and open hearts, God, of, of giving you praise for what you have done for us. God, every time that we think and every time we breathe, may we think of how wonderful you are and thankful for all that, what you've done for us, Lord. May we lift your voice up uh, high today, God, and every day that we are alive, God, that we walk on this earth, Lord, may we give you praises. Lord, we just love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Brandon. Guys, we're going to do a few more songs here. If you would, sing along, join into the worship, join into the music. It's a wonderful thing. And any uh, children that want to go to Children's Church, go ahead and head on out. Miss Sherry's going to go over there. Y'all going to have a great time. It's a great message. It's a wonderful way to spend time with your friends and learn about Jesus all at the same time. going to be there for you know it guys we're going to be there for you know it all oh, this is going to seem like a bad memory
Heaven in a flash, y'all. Whee! Yay! Whee! There it goes. <laughs> Love it. sounds so good. Love when we're up here singing and praising and you guys are singing along with us and just creating a, this beautiful massive sound of worship to the Lord. You can't get that anywhere else guys. You can't get that unless you're around other believers and you're in church and you're singing and that spirit's moving and everyone's voices are all together. You can't get that from a TV preacher. You can't get that from the radio. You can't get that from home with your Bible. Can't you get that get, anywhere but church. You only get that feeling and that spirit when you're around other Christians in church. You don't have to go to church, but it's always good when you can be here and be a part of that. It just makes your whole week better. You 
Every breath, every breath I'm able. That's what it should be for all of us, right? Mm -hmm. Every day. I dare not trust the 
sweetest frame, but holy trust in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I think Mandy's telling Mike what to do again this morning. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I'm with you on it, buddy. I'll, I'll uh, as I told that young man last night uh, that uh, I was doing a wedding on the courthouse square in Supper Springs. And if you haven't been to Supper Springs and see the square, it's outstanding. It's a beautiful place. And uh, this boy played college football, and he's going off to Temple University to be offensive line coach. And he's kin folks to me, and I like standing beside him. Because he sure makes me look small. But anyway, little bride, you know, she's about like this. And so I told him right off the bat, I said, son, uh, first thing you need to do is make sure that you learn those two words and life's good for you. Always remember, yes, dear. The sooner you start saying them, the quicker life gets good. Anyway, got a few uh, announcements this morning for our visitors. So glad you're here this morning. Uh, we'd love for you to fill out a visitor's paper on the back table back there before you leave this morning. Uh, I wanted to say uh, also thank you to everybody that remembered to set your clocks this morning because I'm going to hear from a bunch of folks that say, I forgot to set my clock. Well, you know what I'm going to do this year? I'm going to write them all down and see if they get here an hour early in the fall. You know. But now it's a, that hour of sleep used not to be a big deal. It's getting there now. Ah, let's see. Oh, I got, uh, you know, I like to talk about, I love our kids and our teenagers and everything. And, and uh, I like to talk about their accomplishments but if you haven't seen y'all never see JC she sits up in the dark room up there running the running everything but uh, she may have jumped up there because uh, this week she uh, she set a school high jump record at range that had stood since 1985 and when she jumped five foot five inches that's <laughs> that's a you know, I've always been amazed that people can jump over their head. I couldn't jump over a basketball. I just, it just didn't happen. But uh, so glad to be here this morning. Good to see everybody. Uh, man, it's always great to be in the house of the Lord each week. I uh, did talk to Billy Burnett this week. He's been approved. They're going to do the stem cell pretty quick. Uh, they found plenty of donors, and so... Hopefully, y'all continue to pray for him. Uh, Midge, you know, she broke her wrist. I didn't know till today that it was right above a plate where she had broke it in a car wreck years ago. Uh, remember her? Uh, let's see if I heard any more on any. Gran is home now. Gran's home. Hallelujah. Uh, remember Angel Unfred. Y'all know Bruce and Shirley that, that come with us when, when they can. Bruce has been down with back troubles for a long time. But I hear from them regularly, and uh, I heard from them this week, and their daughter, Angel, um, has two masts. I forget where they said in her body, but y'all remember Bruce and, and Shirley's daughter, Angel, as she goes through the process of seeing what the problem is. Um, remember the family, uh, Patsy Mullins is not doing very well. Uh, George Tom Hayes, uh, the same. Uh, Brenda Burnett, well actually Brenda Vess, uh, that's Billy's sister. She had uh, part of her lung removed this week, so that family's had a pretty rough go for, with the, the cancer and stuff lately. So uh, if you would, if you'd remember them in your prayers. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you for this wonderful day that we get to come together to worship. Father, we just ask you to be with those that was mentioned this morning in prayer and for those that weren't mentioned. Father, there's so many problems going on within their lives and within this country. And we ask you to pray for, we, we pray to you f for peace. That you would put in the hearts of the people of this nation and the people of this world 
that we need you. Father, we see evil growing every day. We ask you to protect us from it. And we ask you that we can go out into the world and touch maybe one life that would change a person from being an evil aspect of the community into being one of your children. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I heard a story this week. A little girl went with her grandmother to the funeral of her other grandmother. And when they come out, the little girl asked his grandmama, said, where did grandmother go? And her grandmother said, well, we believe that she's gone to heaven to be with Jesus. And the little girl sat there a minute and she said, grandmother, how old was she? And the, the grandmama said she was 80 years old. And the little girl said, well, how old are you? She said, I'm 83. And the little girl waited a few seconds and she said, I sure hope God hadn't forgot you. <laughs> the other one's not so much a joke as it is the truth. When I found this, they, they had it, this, this guy that I know has a, a book out and then has a bunch of funnies in it. And I, I steal them off of him sometime. This one is going to be more of, yep, that's right. Things my mother taught me. And you can just, you're going to hear some that you know. Things my mother taught me. Logic. My mom said, if you fall off that swing and break your neck, you can't go to the store with me today. <laughs> My mama taught me to think ahead. If you don't pass that spelling test, you'll never get a good job. Taught, My mother taught me to meet a challenge. What were you thinking? Going up my hand with that one. And then you answer, and then they tell you, don't talk back to me. So you have to understand how to meet those challenges. My mother taught me about genetics a long time before I got into school. She said, you're just like your dad. Anticipation. My mother taught me anticipation. Just wait till your father gets home. My mother taught me about receiving. She said, when I get you home, you're going to get it. This one, if you have children, I guarantee you that you have said this one. The last one. My mama taught me justice. One day you're going to have kids and I hope they turn out just like you. Then you'll see what it's like. Yeah, everybody in here has got kids have said that before. I have no doubt about it. Oh, me. You know, last three weeks we've looked at the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5. And that's where we're going to be today also is in chapter 5. So if you want to go ahead and start turning there. And I ask you, I always encourage you to bring your Bibles with you. Something to write on. A lot of people bring their cell phones to read the Bible off of so they tell me. And, you know... It worked out pretty good, but one day I heard a lady in the back. She's, I thought she was reading along with me, and she said, Bingo! <laughs> what did I miss there? Anyway, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 today is going to be our main verse. And Jesus tells us, says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. Now, honestly, this has been a, a verse that for years I've seen it and read it and heard it read, but I didn't really understand fully the meaning of it, I don't believe. You know, from, from the human standpoint, we'll look at it from there now, but from the human standpoint, salt is one of the most useful minerals on earth. It's you know, doctors would tell you to cut back on it. Obviously, they do. But without it, the human body will not function correctly. We have to have it. We'll, if you don't have enough salt, you'll have 
muscle cramps. You'll have, you'll be sick to your stomach. Uh, you'll actually have a lower resistance to diseases. And salt is used for so many things. It's obviously seasoning. Uh, I don't use a lot of salt anymore, but growing up, you know, if it wasn't, if you couldn't see the salt, you didn't have enough on it. But, you know, and, I, and I'm not a cook. I couldn't put anything in the cookbook this year because I can't cook. But I also understand that they even put a pinch of salt in cakes and, and pudding and all that kind of stuff. That's why that was not something I would think of. Salt's also a preservative. It slows down the rotting process, I guess is the best way. It keeps it from spoiling. Uh, it will do it, but it slows it down. Again, salt will give us strength. That's what our muscles need to, to grow. And I don't know if this is still a th thing nowadays. It's been a long time. Folks, I'll be out of high school 50 years this June the 1st. That don't even seem possible. But back in the day, we, uh, we'd sometimes take salt tablets before a game. I'm sure a bunch of you have done that because it does two things. It, uh, it's good for hydration and it will help rehydrate you. Because if you eat salt, you're going to drink water. There's just no doubt about that. And it also helps uh, contain uh, uh, electrolytes in the body. Do you ever get, a, you ever get any salt in a cut finger or a wound? Stings just a, just a tad, don't it? Well, you know that it actually prevents infection. The salt does. Now, I know I see some of the looks out there, and you're saying, I wonder what this has got to do with my spiritual life. Well, we're going to try to give it a go here. Jesus used this, and I'll call it a, par a parable, to equate salt to how we should perform. And it's a great analogy of truth as to regarding our Christian life and the things that we should do and our responsibilities as a Christian. Again, Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. He's revealing that to the believers, that that's truly what we are. It's not something that's open for debate. It's not open, uh, we're salt of the earth. Jesus is very plain about that. As long as there's Christians that's willing to speak for the Lord, there will be salt. Now, Jesus is not saying here that we're table salt, okay? That's not what he's saying to us. We are spiritual salt for the world. That is our duty. We are the salt that gives flavor to a tasteless, awful world. We are the salt that can slow down the decay of this world that we live in. And our spiritual salt will slow down this rotten evilness that we see daily. That's what Jesus is saying about us. That our spiritual salt would, should slow down and stop the moral issues in our country. The, and help preserve a society that is dying, that is lost from total corruption. Sadly, we live in an age where the spiritual salt can't even been found in some churches. An example. Have you ever watched, and I have to say watch because obviously I don't go to many church services that I'm not participating in. But have you ever watched and saw where you hear something that they say, a scripture that they've used, and you have never seen nor heard of it in the Bible? What I'm saying is they will, there are some places that when they get up to do a message that they will twist the scripture to meet the evil needs of their congregation or for themselves. 
There's a lot of stuff going on in this world right now that the Bible plainly calls out as an abomination. Okay? How do they preach that? How, how, how could they possibly get up in front of a congregation and preach that it's okay? Folks, when we get to the point in a church as a, as a whole, as a world of, of church, when we get to a point where we are preaching to say, that's okay, don't worry about it. Bible didn't mean it. It said it's an abomination, but that wasn't exactly what it meant. It wasn't in red letters. I mentioned that a few weeks ago. I heard somebody tell me that. We'll find in there where it says in the red letter. So you believe in Jesus, what Jesus said, but you don't believe what God told the rest of the Bible. It's terrible. They've, they've, been, they've become unconcerned. Satan has got a hold of them. They're, they're influenced by the evil that we live in. And they go by one of these two moral, uh, mottos, and I know you've heard them. You from the 70s heard it this way, if it feels good, do it. That's the motto. The other motto of today is live and let live. That's what they want you to listen to today. Well, what's it, bother, what's it hurting you that they do this? Well, first off, I don't want my children or grandchildren to be around it. Second is I worry about that person going to hell. I'm concerned about their soul. Do I dislike them? Absolutely not. Do I dislike what they do? Absolutely. I pray for them every day. You know, God's not looking for, for us to be part-timers, part-time salt, if you will. What God desires our true salt to be is true worship to him uh, complete surrender not just okay I will on Sunday morning complete surrender the desire to have a desire to make a difference in someone's life folks I've said this so many times I know you're sick of it but if we know for a fact that somebody's unsaved and we know there's a lot of people out there that's unsaved we can't we shouldn't rest until that person has been told the gospel of Jesus because somebody's got to tell them. You might be the only person they would listen to. But his other desire is that we reach others for Christ. And that we use our spiritual salt to grow the kingdom of God. You know I hope and pray that my children and grandchildren can see spiritual salt in my life. I make no bones about it. I failed. Oh, I failed miserably early in life in raising my kids. How they turned out so good was because of their mama and other influences in their life because it wasn't me. But I hope that I can stay every day now and they see that I enjoy living for the Lord. I enjoy being spiritual salt. I enjoy serving God in any capacity he'll have me in. Folks, serving God is rewarding. If you lead somebody or if you just tell somebody about Jesus, you don't know, you planted a seed for them there. It's so rewarding. It's a privilege that God uses each one of us for his for His kingdom and it's something that we should be jumping up and down excited about if we never if we're out in the world and we never get excited about Jesus in front of other people besides our church family that's also excited how do we expect the lost to get excited if we run around looking like we've just been eat a, as I think my old father-in-law used to say eating a sour lemon We've got to show.
Matthew 5, 13 again, another portion of it says, But if salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? I mentioned this before, but salt has so many different elements. It does so many things. It preserves from decaying. The nation of Israel are God's children. They were considered God's children. But they lost their home to captivity because there was no spiritual salt around. They had no spiritual salt and they weren't preserved. And you know, and I often wonder if in America there's no doubt that there's a lot of good in this country but there's no doubt that there's a lot of evil forces out there. Satan is working hard. But I often wonder if it isn't the spiritual salt of the Christians that hadn't kept God from just completely wiping us off the earth with some of the stuff that, that goes on. What we must do, we must continue and work continuously to do our very best to preserve the morals, our church, the church as a whole in our homes. Paul writes in Colossians 4.6, says, let your conversation be always full of grace. I like this. Seasoned with salt so that you may know how to answer. Now the salt that's being mentioned here is the Bible, if you would. The word of God. Uh, the, the truth in the gospels. And we must be prepared to share that with everyone. Now, we must do it in a tasteful, he says grace, I believe graceful way yet this is where the salt comes in we got to tell the truth we can't water down God's word if it says it it says it and then it's not up to me nor you or anyone else to say he didn't mean it that way going about your business I think that's what this verse is telling us about the salt that he wants us to to use a little salt with the kindness and the tenderness. Another thing that salt does is penetrates. It has the natural ability to just destroy anything it touches. Uh, you, ever, you ever see a vehicle that's come from down around Galveston? Matter of fact, we can get closer to home that. I know some of y'all work at the salt mine, and I would have bet that you either, one, drive a older vehicle out there every day or you got underneath your your vehicles got enough rust on it that you couldn't scrape it off with with if you sandblasted it from here on because what it will do one tiny piece of salt get in one tiny nick in that car and the next thing you know everything in there the paint job starts going away It'll become corroded. See, that's the salt, the spiritual salt that we have should do the same thing. We should have the ability with our spiritual salt to get into, to enter into the, to the evilness and the darkness that's in our, in our world. You know, if each one of us went out today, and this is, not, this is not condemning anyone because I don't know the hearts of anyone, but we all know somebody that just will flat out say, I'm not saved and don't want to be. Well, there's a place we need to be working pretty hard. But salt purifies also. It's used to purify. It's used to cleanse different things. Uh, salt water is used to Clean up sores and cuts and stuff on you. I couldn't stand it, but some folks could stand it. I want you to listen. God used it for healing. Watch this. 2 Kings 2, 21, 22. I just love this verse. Then he went out to the spring and threw the salt into it, saying, This is what the Lord says. I have healed this water. Never again will it cause death or make the land unproductive. And the water has remained wholesome to this day, according to the word 
Elisha had spoken. Now a little background on this. The water was not drinkable. It was not drinkable. Elijah, Elijah and Elisha, so I may get them fit, uh, mixed up, but we'll get back to it if I do. Elijah was about to be taken straight to heaven, okay? Elisha was his traveling companion. And Elisha knew what was about to happen to Elijah, so he asked him for a double portion of his power. Now his power, he was talking about the power of God. Elijah didn't have any power without God. So Elisha watches Elijah go up in a, uh, I've lost my thought of the word, chariot, chariot of fire. And they said in a whirlwind he went up. So God granted Elisha what he had requested. The first thing that he did was to demonstrate God's power was to go and use the salt. He puts the salt in there. The water is suddenly good and it's good to this day, says the Bible. Our spiritual salt should have a cleansing effect on the people around us. They should, it should, we, they should see it they should feel it. They should understand it. As a church, our spiritual salt could and should be to help others, to clean them up, to tell them about Jesus. And when I say we, we're doing anything we do is through the Lord. Nothing can be done without him. We're doing it with him, with his guidance. Our spiritual salt can lead them to the place where that they will be wholly cleaned and will remain clean for all of eternity. As I said earlier, salt will make you thirsty. I like to eat fish every now and then. And boy, when I get through eating fish, they not enough water. In bright star Salem down here to put to get my mouth not dry. When we have that thirst for Jesus, when we make Jesus the number one in our life, and that's where He needs to be, got to be, and wants to be, we are to spread that spiritual salt to make others thirsty for Him. Our prayer should be to live a life that causes others to desire the Christian life. Salt also produces change. Salt can change anything you touch. It touches. As we talked about metal, uh, it'll melt ice for sure. What do, you, what do you do when the sidewalk's froze? You go get some ice and, or some salt and throw on it. Once salt is added to something, it starts to immediately change. And I hope that there's enough spiritual salt in us that we can cause others to change in our neighbors, neighborhood, in our families, with our friends, in our country, and in this world. Mark 9.50 says, Salt is good, but it loses its saltiness. How can you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with each other. You know, in New Testament times, it, salt was used as a lot of things, and it was used as medications a lot of time. And the same things we use it for now, seasoning and preserves and all that kind of stuff. Believers can be like salt in promoting Peace among our fellow brothers and sisters. That's what shows the preserving power of God. Salt will also produce flavor. As I said earlier, I didn't think you could eat anything without salt on it for a long time. But when, you, when, 
when you add salt, it makes it taste better. And it can actually make some food that you can't hardly stand, standable. I have to check on that word when I get home. Not sure standable is a word, but uh, thankfully I'm in East Texas here and y'all know what I mean. You know, the world does not accept the appetites of Christians the way we are. So we need to make it desirable. Make them taste it for those that have never tasted Jesus. Back in our verse for today. It says, but if salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. Did you ever think about, and, and I hadn't, I read this to see where it came from. You ever heard the old saying, not worth his salt? That's where it comes from. It seems that in ancient, ancient times, way back under, that salt was so valuable that many times people were paid in salt. Now I bet you folks that worked at the salt mine don't want to be paid in salt. You probably don't ever want to look at salt again. But it was, ex it was expensive. They would use it for wages. And you know, it, it hadn't been that many years ago. I don't want to date myself too bad. But at one time there was refrigerators were not something that most country folks had. I know, I can remember that my grandparents didn't have one. And they, they'd have an old smokehouse or whatever they call it. I think it was a smokehouse they'd call it. And they'd put salt, they'd cover stuff with salt just to keep it preserved, to keep it from ruining. But you know, we need that spiritual salt. It is necessary for survival of Christianity. That's the only thing that matters in this world is being a Christian in Jesus Christ dying for our sins. Spiritual salt is vital for our work with the Lord. Distasteful salt, as this verse is trying to tell us, is no good. You know, the salt in Jesus' day was probably a little different than ours. It was, it was mined from the earth, which ours is today. But the cleaning process, I suspect, was quite different back then than it is now. It would have dirt mixed with it, foreign objects in it. And, and if it had too much of that in it, it was, it was no good anymore. It no longer uh, had any use. But what they would use it for is they would throw it out. And when he, I believe he said on there uh, to, uh, to, 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 to throw it out, be trampled on by men. What they would do is put it on the path to walk on. They used it kind of like gravel, I guess. That's all it was worth. Folks, a saltless Christian is not any better than that salt that's going on that, that ground. When we become exposed to a world that's dirty with sin, we lose our flavor and without that we lose the qualities to make a difference in somebody's life when we lose it or don't use our spiritual salt we are we become useless in the Lord's work I'll close with this salt is as an individual grain is pretty small but it greatly affects the things that it touches. How salty are you this morning? You say, well, I can't make a difference. I'm only one person. I'm telling you that that's where it starts, is with one person. You can make a difference. We need to realize that how much you're in, yours and my influence has on the church, on the community, and on the country. And we all want to be useful to God. We need to get out. We need to be spreading that spiritual salt 
everywhere, to every corner, wherever we happen to go. Because if we do, we're going to please God and we're going to make a difference in our community. We're going to make a difference in the world. All that difference is to bring glory to God and bring people to know Jesus as Savior. You would if you stand. This is Melanie Bohannon. She come flying up to me last Sunday after church and she said, I want to get baptized. Well, she wanted to get baptized last week, but she didn't have a change of clothes, so I told her that this week would be just fine. Sherry, is your group here? Yes. Okay, they're back in the building. I forget that sometime. I always like the kids to witness this. But I'm so thankful that... Uh, Melanie has come before us. She's trusted Jesus as her Savior. And, you know, we got to talking and who better to baptize her than her dad. And uh, so, Melanie, I just want to be a part of it. I'm going to give you a touch there for no reason other than you're pretty. But uh, when you're ready, if you'll turn this away, grab your nose with one hand and your daddy with the other. All right. Jesus as your Savior? All right. We baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give me five, buddy. Ah, the way. Thank you, Ben. Ah, man, I love doing that. That's, that's great. And uh, y'all stand. We'll... Uh, I almost said I've run out of things to say, but I didn't want everybody to hallelujah at the same time, you know. But uh, thank you all for being here this morning. It's always great to be in the house of the Lord. And, uh, you know, if we can ever do anything for you, answer any questions about the church or anything else, be more than happy to. Jesus is the reason, folks. That's why we're here. Without him, we have people of no hope. But with him, we know that we have a home awaiting someday. Y'all have a good week. Be good to each other. May God bless you. Father, we just thank you for this great privilege of coming into your house today. And Father, we thank you for the young lady that came forward this morning to be baptized. It's always good to have another child in your fold. Father, I pray that you will help her and guide her through, the, through this life that she's going to, to face. And Father, we just thank you so much in knowing that you have such love, you have such mercy, and you have such grace on all your people. Father, we ask you to be with those that are sick, those that are lonely, and especially to those that are lost. In Jesus' name, amen.